Brown's daughter's beautician, right? So it's his daughter from a previous marriage had this beautician, and one day she was combing uh, Firaun's daughter's hair, and the comb fell to the ground. And she had, you know, become accustomed to calling on the name of Allah. So, you know, sometimes it's reflexive, you know, just Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, we say these things. She said Bismillah. So his daughter, now we have to see the other side, right? So his daughter was, of course, um, suspicious of this. She inquires, do you mean my father? Because what would Firaun do? He claimed to be God. So she's, this is how he had the power that he had. He, he would force people to accept that he was a God, or not a God, the God, astaghfirullah. So she's just trying to push you know, a little bit more to find out who she means. And she asks her directly, um, do you mean my father? And then the hairdresser boldly says, no, my Lord and, your, and the Lord of your father are the same, Allah. So imagine the strength of this hairdresser. I mean, just think, you know, anybody, I mean, just think about the, the, the faith and the conviction and the courage it takes to the daughter of the most tyrannical human being on the planet that you're going to tell her that I don't believe that your father is anything, you know. I believe in another God. So she was clearly someone. And so the daughter, his daughter, infuriated, she goes and she tells her father that this is what this woman said. Now, he's a monster. We have to just accept. He's a monster. He's not going to accept this. This is a, a slight. It's an insult to him. He has to make an example out of her. So he basically threatens her, and he orders, again, his henchmen to go and to fill a pit with boiling copper. Okay? So it's like a flame of copper. Just imagine the scene. And she, he threatens that he is going to not only torture her and kill her, but before that, just to add some more torture to it, he's going to torture or kill her children. And one by one, make her watch. And you have to see the story from all these sides. She just boldly confronted this tyrant, and she's still... She has istiqamah. She's still standing straight. She's not bowing down. So she, all she says is, one request. I, can't, I just can't even fathom this type of courage. One request, just please collect my bones and my children's bones. That's all I want. Miraculously, he agreed to her one condition. So one by one, they were thrown in front of her. The last one was her nursing infant. So she actually had a nursing infant. And she, just imagine, she, just, she wavered for a moment. Like, I can't do this. You know, just that whisper, it's a whisper. This is an infant. And SubhanAllah, right, there's four babies who spoke. He was one of them. He says to her, right, he says, mother, throw me and it's okay because the adab, the punishment of the, of the next world is far worse than anything in this life. The baby spoke. Allah inspired this baby to give his mother the courage. And subhanAllah, both of them perished. Their bodies, their physical bodies. Of course, we know the reality. Now, this story was, I mean, people watched it. This was, you know, something that they gathered to watch. And Asiya radiallahu anha, she also saw this. It deeply affected her. Really affected her to see this. I mean, it would affect anyone, anyone with decency and humanity. While others were jeering and applauding, he or she was moved by the reality that she's done pretending. She's done masking her true beliefs she realized up until that point that he, as his wife, what would he do to her? He raped women, he tortured children, he killed people without, with impunity, with no thought. What would he do to her? But in that moment, seeing the faith of this hairdresser and her children perish in front of her, she realized she's done. So she goes up to him and she says to him, right, 
kefertu bika, right? I, I, I do not believe in you, right? Wala ubali. And I don't care what you do to me. You, I, don't, I don't believe in you anymore. You're, you're nothing. I don't believe in you. And I don't care what you do to me. Amentu rabbi Musa wa rabbi Harun. I believe in the Lord of Musa and the Lord of Harun, the Lord of all the worlds. So when the Prophet ﷺ was experiencing the Isra wal Miraj, okay, he's on the greatest ascent, right? I mean, he's literally, this is the highlight, the peak of, of, his, of his experience, right? In, I mean, in, in, um, in, in that moment, he said, a smell came to me. He didn't know the smell, and he asked Sayyidina Sayyid Jibreel, like, who, who, what does that smell? Where did that come from? And he said, that is the fragrance of the hairdresser of this story of Asya. Her, her fragrance is in Jannah. It's, it's throughout Jannah. He smelled it. She is significant. So a lot of times, shaitan makes us feel small and invisible. But we have to remember, it doesn't matter if people know you. And I am sure I can speak on behalf of everyone here. Just because, you know, you have a public name or a public persona, it, this is insignificant. It is, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do, it, am I prioritizing him? That's all that matters. That's it. And if you do that, you are very, you are known to him. He loves you. It's a, and he'll confirm that for you. But don't look at things from these, this, these, uh, the lens that this dunya teaches you to see that your value is only placed in your external, your beauty, how much wealth you have, how much money you have, whether you're married, whether you have children, insignificant, right? Insignificant, it's all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, as I said, you know, there may be many of us who, who uh, you know, in the future, no one will know us, but inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he of course knows us, he made us, so inshallah, jazakumullah khair, and I'll, I'll pass the mic now, back a little.